Okay, chapter 6, day 2. Um, what we're going to focus on today is what is a geometric sequence and series. All right? What is a geometric sequence and series? So a geometric sequence, because we did arithmetic sequence last class, Geometric sequence is a list of numbers such that there's a common ratio now. A common ratio is like a common multiplier. It's a common multiplier, okay? The multiplier could be a number greater than one or smaller than one, but it's something that you're going to multiply by every time. So for example, here's one fourth, one half, one, two, four. Common ratio. Let's find it. It is the multiplier that we have from term to term. And in order to find the ratio, we take any number, any number, and divide it by the number before it, which is a sub n minus 1. So we take a sub n divided by a sub n minus 1. Uh, in an arithmetic, we subtract it. Here, we're going to divide to find this common ratio. We need to calculate at least two of them to find r, though, because maybe it's an arithmetic sequence and that for the common ratio would not be the same. Um, so you have to make sure you do at least two to, to make sure you also know that you have an arith a geometric sequence. So I'm going to take any number, I'll take the number one, divide it by a half, divide it by the number before it, I get two. I take any number, four, divided by the one before it, four divided by two is two, so my common ratio is two. So sometimes the question might ask for the common ratio. Sometimes it might say write out the first five terms or write out the first certain number of terms. If, now here's, here's the, the information they give to you, okay? They'll say a sub one is one and the ratio is six. And then just with that information, write out the first five terms. So what do we have? We have one, times 6 is 6, times 6 is 36, times 6 is 216, times 6 more is 1296. Okay? Write out the first five terms. So, for example, B, first term is 3, the ratio is negative 2. Alright? So what do we do? We take 3 and we multiply by negative 2 every time. So 3 times negative 2 is negative 6, times negative 2 is positive 12, times negative 2 would be negative 24, times negative 2 would be positive 48. Okay? Here's one more. It doesn't matter if it's decimals, fractions, it doesn't matter. I got my first term, I got my multiplier, and I multiply by 3.2 every time, and I can write out five terms. So sometimes they will say, what would the first five terms look like? And you have to just know how to take the first term and then multiply by the number every time. Finding the nth term. Sometimes you they say, well, find what this term would be. Is it, you have a term that you're going to start on, you have a common ratio, and then you have n minus 1 terms more than the one that you started on. So if you want to find, for example, the sixth term, you're going to start at the first term, and you're going to do this multiplier five more times. Okay? Notice up here, if I want to find the fifth term, I start here, and I multiply once, twice, three times, four times, because from what I'm starting at, the multiplier, to get to this term, I multiplied one less than the term number. Is how many more multiplications I need to do. So this formula is not given to you. You're going to have to know it. It's the general formula for an exponential problem. We have an ending number, starting number, a multiplier, but raised to the n minus 1 is the only difference there. So now, find the seventh term of the sequence. Okay? So, seventh term of this sequence. In order to find the seventh term, I have to find my common ratio. So the first thing I'm going to do is find this ratio. All right? So find the common ratio. So I take the 6 and divide it by 2. 
I take the 18 and divide it by 6. It looks like my common ratio is 3. Now I can use it to get the next n terms or use it in the formula. What do I mean by that? Well, I could go and I say, all right, a sub 7, which is the seventh term, equals the first term, and then my common ratio is 3, and I'll have six more multiplications of that 3, because 7 minus 1 would be 6. And so the seventh term would be 2 times 3 to the 6th power, 1458. Now, if I wanted to instead, I could just times it by 3, times it by 3, times it by 3, and keep going until I get to the seventh term. To me, that's a lot easier than trying to remember this formula. Just go ahead and take my ratio and just keep multiplying. You have a calculator and you have a pencil, and you can just you can write it all down. All right? Uh, probably the hardest question is this one, in which they give you a, the second term and the fifth term, and they want to find the eleventh term. So you don't know the first term. It's not easy to find the common ratio. Okay? So, but let's look at how we could do it. If we let the second term be the term we start on and the fifth term the term we end on, then I can find this ratio. And again, n, you have the term you're ending on minus the term you're starting with. We're going to have three more multipliers to get there. Well, I know this value given to me. I know this value. All I have to do is solve for r. So in this case, you can work the term that you're starting on would be the second term. The term you're ending on is the fifth term. All right. So I divide both sides by negative 3, and then raise both sides to the one-third power, and my common ratio is 2. Now that I know my ratio is 2, I can go back and say, okay, if I start with the second term, and I want to get to the 11th term, I have 9 more, 11 minus 2, 9 more multipliers. My ratio is 2. So my starter, negative 3, equals 2, or times 2 to the 9th power, I get negative 1356. That's probably as tough as they get. Series is the sum of the geometric sequence. This formula is given to you on your final. And you're just, what does it say? The sum of n terms is the first term times 1 minus the ratio multiplied times the number of terms you're using divided by 1 minus the ratio. So for example, Find the sum of the geometric uh, the sum of the geometric sequence, which we would call a geometric series, but the sum of that sequence. If I know my first term is five, my second term is ten, my third term is twenty, and the last term is twelve eighty. I don't know how many terms it was, but it was twelve eighty. So first we gotta find the ratio again. So ten divided by five is two, twenty divided by ten is two, my ratio is two. Now I don't know how many terms it took to get here. So I'm going to write them out. Write out the terms. So 5 times 2 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 times 2. Just My ratio is 2. Just keep multiplying by 2. Now, if I want to sum them, I could just type all this in my calculator, add them up, and it gets my answer. If I wanted to use my formula, I have to count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 9 terms and then just plug into the formula. The formula says the number I start with, right, 5, 1 minus my multiplier is 2, 9 terms over 1 minus my multiplier. So 2555. You could easily just type these in and add them up. But geometric is basically like an arithmetic, except that it's using a common multiplier versus a common add-on. And so we're just going to work on practice problems with this, and you'll see you'll work your way through and reason your way through these without any trouble.